Hello, and welcome to this presentation on ammonium nitrate. This training session has been designed to serve as an informational presentation and is being conducted by the South Carolina Firefighter Mobilization, Hazardous Materials Working Group, in coordination with the South Carolina Firefighters Association. Most people are familiar with ammonium nitrate as a component of ANFO, which is an acronym for ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. This mixture was used as an explosive in the terrorist attack at the Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 1995 as seen in the upper right portion of your screen. In 1988, six Kansas City, Missouri firefighters died in the line of duty fighting a fire at a construction site that involved ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. The more recent incident that has raised awareness regarding ammonium nitrate alone was the explosion that occurred at an industry in the town of West Texas. On April 17, 2013, a fire occurred at this facility and an explosion followed that injured 160 people, damaged or destroyed over 150 buildings, and killed at least 15 people, including 11 firefighters. The following, following video depicts the energy released in this explosion. Put the wind blowing that way. There's a long history of ammonium nitrate explosions. The Texas City disaster of April 16, 1947 was the deadliest industrial accident in U.S. history and one of the largest non-nuclear explosions. Originating with a mid-morning fire on board the French registered vessel SS Grand Camp docked in the port of Texas City, its cargo of approximately 2,300 tons of ammonium nitrate detonated. With the initial blast and subsequent chain reaction of further fires and explosions in other ships and nearby oil storage facilities, killing at least 581 people, including all but one member of the Texas City Fire Department. Around 8 a.m., smoke was spotted in the cargo hold of the Grand Camp while it was still moored at its dock. Over the next hour, attempts to put out the fire or put it under control failed as a red glow returned after each effort to douse the fire. Shortly before 9 a.m., the captain ordered his men to steam the hold, a firefighter method where steam is piped in to put out fires in the hope of preserving the cargo. Meanwhile, the fire had attracted a crowd of spectators along the shoreline who believed they were a safe distance away. Spectators noted that the water around the dock ship was already boiling from the heat and the splashing water touching the hull of the ship was vaporized into steam. The cargo hold and deck began to bulge as the pressure of the steam increased inside. At 9.12 a.m., the ammonium nitrate reached an explosive threshold and the vessel then detonated, causing great destruction and damage throughout the port. The tremendous blast sent a 15-foot wave that was detectable nearly 100 miles off the Texas shoreline. The blast leveled nearly 1,000 buildings on land. The Grand Camp explosion destroyed the Monsanto Chemical Company plant and resulted in ignition of refineries and chemical tanks on the waterfront. Falling bales of burning twine added to the damage while the Grand Camp's anchor was hurled across the city. Sightseeing airplanes flying nearby had their wings shorn off, forcing them out of the sky. Ten miles away, people in Galveston were forced to their knees. Windows were shattered in Houston, Texas, 40 miles away. People felt the shock 100 miles away in Louisiana. The explosion blew almost 6,350 tons of the ship's steel into the air, some at supersonic speed. Official casualty estimates came to a total of 567, including all the crewmen who remained on board the Grand Camp. 
but m many victims were burned to ashes or blown to bits, and the official total is believed to be an undercount. All but one member of the Texas City Volunteer Fire Department were killed in the initial explosion on the docks while fighting the shipboard fire, and with the fires raging, first responders from other areas were initially unable to reach the site of the disaster. You may be wondering by now why ammonium nitrate even exists, since it has been the cause of so many deaths. Ammonium nitrate is an odorless, colorless, or white crystal salt produced by the reaction of ammonia and nitric acid. Its chemical formula is NH4NO3, which is simply nitric acid, HNO3, plus ammonia, NH3. Ammonium nitrate is extremely beneficial in agriculture as it is an important component in fertilizer mixtures. Ammonium nitrate's nitrogen content is readily absorbable by plant life and vegetation. Small quantities are also sold as an additive for mining explosives and other non-agricultural uses. As previously mentioned, ammonium nitrate in fuel oil, otherwise known as ANFO, is a tertiary explosive. A tertiary explosive does not readily detonate without other materials. Note on the bottom right portion of your screen, ammonium nitrate's NFPA 704 marking with a blue zero, red zero, yellow three, and OX for oxidizer present in the white section. Ammonium nitrate is generally not harmful. However, inhaling large concentrations of ammonium nitrate dust can cause respiratory problems or even suffocation. Moreover, if high concentrations of ammonium nitrate are swallowed, it can cause cardiac irregularities, vomiting, convulsions, collapse, and suffocation. When mixed with water, ammonium nitrate forms a mild acid which can cause irritation to the eyes, nose, and skin. Some effects of exposure can be delayed up to 48 hours. Ammonium nitrate is not flammable, however it is a strong oxidizer that can contribute to the ignition of surrounding combustibles. Ammonium nitrate will only explode under extreme heat and pressure in a confined space. An explosion will create a visible cloud of ammonia, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen dioxides. The following video depicts ammonium nitrate's behavior in fire and how it contributes to burning of surrounding combustibles. Let's examine the behavior of ammonium nitrate alone when heat is applied. As we can see, it begins to melt. However, it does not burn. Even though substantial heat is applied, the ammonium nitrate merely melts. If the heat is sustained, the ammonium nitrate begins to fume as it decomposes, but still it does not burn. Here, we see how a pile of plain sawdust behaves when the same gas flame is applied to it. The sawdust ignites quite readily and the whole combustion spreads quickly over the total surface of the pile. But just as quickly, the combustion appears to die down. Opening up the pile, shows that the sawdust has burned mainly on the surface. This is because there's not enough oxygen to support combustion inside the center of the pile. Once a fresh surface is opened up and exposed to air, the combustion begins again because more oxygen has become available. Next, the same experiment is tried again, but this time the pile contains a mixture of ammonium nitrate and sawdust. The mixture ignites rapidly and burns quite vigorously. This time, it is clear that the mixture is burning completely, even deep in the center of the pile.
It has been completely burned out because this time the oxygen necessary for combustion was provided by the ammonium nitrate contained in the mixture. Let's take this experiment a step further. The following experiment will show that ammonium nitrate can support combustion even in the absence of air. Again, the pile is a mixture of sawdust and ammonium nitrate. After ignition, it is covered with a funnel to exclude the air. The fumes we see contain oxides of nitrogen and other gases released by the burning mixture. It is important to note that these are toxic gases. Upon examination, it is clear that the pile has burnt completely, again, even though oxygen was excluded. The ammonium nitrate has supplied the extra oxygen necessary for total combustion. When responding to an ammonium nitrate release with no fire present, you should evacuate the immediate area, 50 meters. The product should be confined and ignition sources should be removed. Efforts should be taken to prevent ammonium nitrate from entering lakes, ponds, waterways, or sewers. Normally hopper trailers or box trailers with individual packing will be used to transport ammonium nitrate via roadways. When responding to an ammonium nitrate release with fire, flooding amounts of water should be used in the early stages of the fire. When massive fires occur involving ammonium nitrate, Operational emphasis should be placed on public protective actions in the event an explosion occurs. Ammonium nitrate decomposes during combustion and produces toxic oxides of nitrogen. When water and dissolved ammonium nitrate are heated, nitrous oxide is produced. Nitrous oxide is used as an anesthetic known as laughing gas. It too is an oxidizer that will support combustion and is dangerously explosive. Solid streams of water may be ineffective on nitrous oxide. The proper personal protective equipment to wear during an ammonium nitrate fire is difficult to determine. Structural firefighting clothing provides limited protection from oxides of nitrogen produced during the fire. However, chemical protective clothing provides little to no thermal protection from fire. As in all hazardous materials research, multiple sources should be examined and the worst case scenario should be considered appropriate. The Chris Manual recommends that SCBA be worn and the surrounding area be evacuated. The Chris Manual also recommends that firefighting only be conducted from a protected location with unmanned hose holder or monitor nozzles. The Department of Transportation Emergency Response Guide concurs with the Chris Manual. Fighting large ammonium nitrate fires should be conducted from maximum distance using unmanned hose holders or monitor nozzles. If this is impossible, withdraw from the area and let the fire burn. The Wireless Information System for Emergency Responders from the National Library of Medicine also concurs with the Chris Manual and ERG. Smothering agents, such as inert gases, steam, foam, dry chemicals, or sand, will have no effect as ammonium nitrate as an oxidizer creates its own oxygen to support combustion. Remember that in the Texas City disaster, the ship's captain attempted to steam the hold to extinguish the fire. This failed to prevent the massive explosion that occurred. Ammonium nitrate can be detonated if the initiating source is sufficiently large or if it is heated under sufficient confinement. The degree of confinement necessary is dependent upon the purity of the material. United Nations North American number 1942 is used to designate technical grade ammonium nitrate, while UNNA number 2067 is used for fertilizer grade. Technical grade may begin decomposition at a lower temperature due to chemical additives. This decomposition generally follows three stages. First, ammonia and nitric acid will dominate the release during decomposition. 
As temperatures increase, nitrous oxide will be the main decomposition project, product. Finally, at temperatures above 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, nitrogen oxide gases are formed in considerable amounts. As previously discussed, these nitrogen oxide gases are extremely toxic. The National Fire Protection Association Standard Number 490 is titled The Code for the Storage of Ammonium Nitrate. The latest published version is from 2002 and it covers the building construction, pile sizes, spacing, and separation from contaminating material that could increase its sensitivity during a fire. We hope this presentation has been informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Chief Charlie King, Chairman of the South Carolina Firefighter Mobilization Hazmat Working Group at the email address on your screen. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attention.